Uh, saya akan pass sesi kali ini kepada Arthur selaku PIC kepada uh, Robonia 2022 RBN Code. Okay, without further ado, I pass this to you Arthur. Hello, thank you Adam. Uh, selamat petang. So I think malam ni sebab kita ada dua sesi, so memang bercampur aduk lah. And some will be in the other session juga. Ada orang yang masih masuk ni. <laughs> okay, so just to bagi uh, sedikit update lah sambil kita menunggu yang lain masuk juga. So saya akan repeat ni nantilah, tapi ini ringkas saja. So kemungkinan besar that anda sudah nampak ada cara untuk upload robot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give a quick 3 4 minute punya presentation lah how you can get your own robot. So let's say lah um, you have a robot. Sebelum ini kamu sudah bikin training dengan dua robot macam gini. So let's say this is my um, arena. So from this you will notice that dalam sistem Actually, ada dua button yang baru sudah. Tunggu, saya kasih shrink screen dulu. So, you can see that there is upload and retrieve. So, in fact, let's say like this code is does nothing right. I cuba upload. So, when I press upload, dia akan cakap, your code will be uploaded. Any robot on already on the server be overwritten. Select OK to proceed. Kalau you tekan OK, you tell you, oh, OK, robot created. OK. Now, let's just say, saya bikin code lah. Tapi kod ni salah, ada bug dan sebagainya, ada error. So, I can actually press retrieve and then existing robot not found on server. So, press OK um, to replace your current code or cancel. And as you can see, dia kembali kepada code. So, memang ini kena save on the server. So, this is one thing lah. Anda boleh save code pergi server. But here's the important thing. Uh, nampak tadi when we started the arena, So every time kamu bikin arena and save code, if you look at the bottom of the arena, got more instructions. So yang penting di sini is, each arena comes with a robot ID and key pair. Ini dia robot ID, ini dia key pair. So robot ID ni, kalau nampak betul-betul, actually sama dengan arena ID you. This robot is already uploaded and nama dia adalah bot Campur the arena ID yang anda gunakan. Dengan menggunakan kedua-dua ID dan robot key ini, anda boleh update robot ini. So that means ada dua cara untuk update robot. Cara pertama is, you can just save the robot guna upload button. Tapi if you also want to try, you can use the same robot ID and key untuk update terus di robot manager. So mungkin ini boleh menjawab soalan juga tadi. During the competition, you can update your robot at any time during the competition. Any time during the competition. So, but even when you update, they're gonna loaded into arena lah. So to demonstrate how the uh, that robot is loaded, nampak sini ada bot C3. What I'm going to do, saya copy and paste ni. Then saya kembali lagi to the front page. Sekarang robot tu sudah kena save di server. So I will go down to server side run. Sudah saya ready. Ada slow bot, ada fast bot, ada spin bot, ada nothing. So kali ni, I will just copy and paste the bot name sini. So as you can see, this is the bot yang saya sudah save. And bila saya keluar, link ini akan update. So you notice dalam the link uh, ada manual brains equals slow bot, fast bot, spin bot, dan juga bot yang saya upload. So now when saya buka arena ini, it will load in the bot yang saya save tadi dalam arena baru. So this means, let's say lah, internet kamu lambat and you not testing your robot tapi demi arena bergerak lambat, now you can test your robot completely on the server. Which means kamu upload terus, boleh guna pakai. So as you can see, bot saya tidak bikin apa-apa lah because dia memang tiada code on the page. But... This is the bot yang saya save tadi. So let's say I update this bot. So what I can do is, tunggu lah, saya kembali lagi to the what? Because arena ni sama ba, dia punya code dia. So this is dia punya robot key di sini. So what I'm going to do is, saya cuba update dah. What I need is two things. So this one, kamu kena save. One moment. Saya so buka saja notepad sini, just to demo. Then, Hello, welcome. Uh, so 
uh, kita sort of santai-santai lah. Just quick demo of some of the new features. So ini adalah contoh robot ID dan key. Dia memang panjang. Okay. So this one boleh diguna pakai if you want to load the robot into another arena. Tapi kalau nak update, you need the mia bot ID dan juga the mia bot key. This key Jangan share dengan orang lain. Of course, now saya tunjuk ni lah. Which means that sesiapa pun yang type ni balik, they can update this robot. So, let me demonstrate by mana boleh update. So, dengan robot ID dan robot key, ada link juga pergi robot manager di sini. I can click on the robot manager. Ada orang. So, saya meet dulu. Okay. So, from the robot ID di sini, oops, mana semua yang notepad hilang sudah. Sebentar, dapat my notepad back. <laughs> One moment. Okay, so I'll take the bot ID, so paste sini. Then I will take the mia key, paste sini. So apa jadi kalau key salah? So let's say I tambah lah. Oh no, wait. So cancel ni, I put, just letak yang um, bad key. Then I cuba masuk robot name, robot team, and dia punya brain code saya letak saja di sini. Do nothing. And then saya cuba save. Okay, continuing to admit more orang. Uh, untuk, mereka, uh, untuk mereka yang baru masuk, uh, jangan risau. Um, kita just bikin briefing, saya akan repeat lagi selepas ni. Um, so, kita update. So you can see dia access denied. So untuk robot uh, upload ini berjaya, what you need is demia bot ID, kita copy and paste. Robot key dia, kita copy and paste. Then after that, now we can change the robot name. So this time, I'm just going to put Ata Pumia. Robot team, uh, Teda team. Main code dia, this one, saya letak lah. Teda saja, saya letak comment, do nothing. Then saya update. So now it says robot updated. So what happens when kita kembali to the front page and then saya cuba masukkan robot ini sekali lagi dalam demia arena. So dengan slow bot, fast bot, spin bot. Okay, never mind. So kita ada bot sini. Let's tambah tiga do nothing bot supaya kita boleh nampak if this bot does anything. So again, link akan update. Saya akan buka. And you can see Ata punya Teda team. So as you can see, there's a way to update your robot sudah dalam sistem dengan menggunakan robot key. So kalau nak practice, cara yang paling mudah, and this one is, saya akan start balik lagi how this thing works. So kemungkinan uh, sekiranya anda buka website sudah, lepas kena update, you will notice ada feature terbaru. When you masuk arena, you will notice di bahagian bawah arena ada robot ID dan robot key. So, um, untuk makluman, setiap arena sekarang datangnya dengan satu robot ID dan satu robot key. So, dengan menggunakan robot ID dan robot key ini, anda boleh menggunakan uh, kedua-dua ni untuk upload robot atau upload dan update robot dalam server. So, how do you save a robot? Well, cara pertama is, bila anda buka arena, when you buka the robot control panel, ada dua button baru. Upload and retrieve. So, right now, what I can do is, I'll just masukkan, uh, do, I take this trainer, dia sentiasa tembak. I'll also take this trainer, dia akan sentiasa berpusing. So, what I'll do is, I'll combine both trainers. Sekarang, saya akan upload to robot. So, I upload. The thing will tell me my code will be uploaded. Okay. Robot updated. Okay. So actually, that's all I have to do. So let's say after this, I type anything junk, tapi saya tekan retrieve. If I tekan okay, dia akan tarik balik uh, robot yang sudah di-upload dalam server. You can upload as many times as you want. You can retrieve as many times as you want. It's uh, This is macam saving and loading. lah. However, you can only upload satu unik robot untuk setiap arena dan robot ID tu sentiasa akan sama dengan arena ID you. It will be called bot 
and then the mere arena ID. So let's say anda nak testing robot anda tanpa menggunakan robot control panel. Because sometimes saya pun also dengar laporan daripada some people that bila dia cuba guna browser, lambat. Sometimes ada bug juga. Mungkin the especially on mobile device, mungkin sometimes the mobile device susah nak angkat atau lain pun lambat juga. So what you can do is upload robot anda masuk ke dalam server and then pastikan anda dapat sudah demia robot ID dan robot key. So just to repeat. Well, just to repeat, sudah saya save demia robot ID dan robot key. Just remember robot key sangat panjang. So jangan type balik ah, guna copy and paste paling senang. Then after that, kembali to the front page, pergi bawah. And then there is this new section yang baru saja upgrade kemarin yang nama dia server side run. So dalam server side run ini, anda boleh guna apa yang dipanggil server side robots. So untuk makluman anda, all this time bila kamu bikin testing di client anda, di browser anda, those are called client side robots. So what we are doing now is server side. So dalam server side ni, you can actually add as many robots as you want and kita sudah ready some bots for you. For example, I can put four do nothing bots. So you notice sentiasa you can put up to four, but let's say you only wanted three, just select it delete saja then bila mu keluar dia akan uh, organize sendiri dia akan sort sendiri and then dia kembali cantik lagi dia punya so you see saya buang so sekarang ada dua nothing bot saja never mind saya so, bikin tiga nothing bot demi link di sini akan update secara automatik so bila saya run ni you can see there are three robots the three robots is called do nothing do nothing two and do nothing three so robot robot ini is all running on the server and this is robot yang telah disediakan lah. So sekarang saya pergi back lagi. Saya pergi balik demi front. Oh, you will notice, dia akan save juga senarai robot kamu. So let's say sekarang kita tambah satu slow bot and then kita buang one of the nothings. Keluar. If I click this link again, so sekarang kita ada nothing, nothing, slow bot. And the slow bot is working. Dia memang slow lah, but it actually shoots at things. So this one already works. Tapi what happens kalau saya nak masukkan bot tadi yang saya upload, yang saya bikin sendiri? Oh, ada orang? Admit. All you need to do is kita kembali lagi kepada yang bot ID ini yang saya copy and paste tadi. Copy it. Masukkan, let's say we ganti one of the nothing, kita copy and paste this bot. So now when I exit, link akan berubah sekarang it will tambah nothing, slow bot, dan juga bot saya yang saya upload. And when I run this, there, you can see that this is bot C83RS for me, which dia akan pusing and dia akan sentiasa tembak. So as you can see, this is adalah cara bila kamu ada sudah code yang sudah kamu testing in the browser and then kamu mau test lagi on the server, then save it into, then Gunakan dia punya robot upload di sini, upload dia, then go to the bottom of the arena, copy and paste dia punya robot ID, and then masukkan ke dalam server run. And then you can load the bot masuk dalam dia punya arena. So, untuk during the competition, memang ini adalah cara dia lah. What you will do is, instead of bikin di browser, you will upload your robot into the server and semua demia arena akan dilaksanakan di atas server and anda boleh tontonlah demia battle secara live on the arena so during that day you won't be using robot control panel this one is untuk sekarang on the actual day itself untuk uh, not the actual day actually sebelum hari tu pun boleh bikin it's up to you when you want to upload your robot just pastikan kamu upload sebelum competition start lah the other way to upload a robot is dengan menggunakan robot manager yang ada di sini juga. When you click on robot manager, dia akan bagi satu borang. So ini adalah borang upload yang kita cakap uh, satu dua minggu dulu lah. Um, you can see daripada borang ini, dia minta robot ID, dia minta robot key. So let's say kita masuk yang bukan-bukan. Demi robot key. 
and so on and so forth. And kita cuba update. So as you can see, brain code there see reference error. Masih ada error. Nama yang kita update. So it tell you access denied. So let's just say kita gunakan my previous robot. Saya cuba upload. Tapi saya guna key salah juga. And then saya masuk saja apa robot name. Saya cuba upload dia punya brain code. Masih access denied. So in order to upload this, you need, well, okay, here's the other way. Let's say saya gunakan bot, uh, robot ID yang berlainan tetapi saya guna key yang betul. Apa juga ni? You will get access denied. So in order for this to work correctly, anda mesti bagi dia punya robot ID yang betul, copy and paste. Then you can give your robot a name. Don't worry pasal nama lah. So because how we're going to identify robot kamu pada hari itu is melalui robot ID anda. Tapi tambah lah nama. So it's like, as I said, this one mungkin is utter bot. Utter team. Di ke bawah ada sedikit code. Oh, tadi, I don't have code. Never mind lah. I just say do nothing sekarang. Tadi, dia pandai putar dan tembakan. So, this time when I update, it will tell me robot updated. So, kalau saya balik the front page, admit, and this thing masih ada. So, now it will load in robot yang sudah saya update. Tapi tadi, before saya update, robot tu dia pandai pusing dan tembak. Tapi the latest code I've updated is do nothing. Dia tidak bikin apa-apa. So, when I restart this arena, you will notice, nah, Utterbot does nothing, and then dia sudah dapatkan nama dan tim saya. So, this is how um, you will upload a robot. Again, I repeat, ada dua cara. Satu is melalui upload di sini. Satu lagi is, ambil demia robot ID dan robot key, dan masukkan di robot manager ini. So, sekiranya anda tidak pasti, um, demia borang tu ada description. So feel free to read through demia instructions for how to manage this properly lah. It's up to you. Uh, it's up to you how you want to do this. So that is the feature untuk robot upload. Uh, sebelum I go on, um, is there any extra, um, ada soalan ke? <laughs> okay, mula ada banyak sudah. Uh, Ada soalan, anybody? Oh, ada chat. Tunggu, saya cek chat dulu. Oh, cek, si Adam saja yang cap. Okay, so this is how you can add server-side robots into your system. So for those yang mengalami uh, internet yang tidak stabil atau um, ya yeah, internet tak stabil ke atau tak laju, um, you can use server-side robots. There is one kekangan lah bila kamu guna server-side robot. As you can see, if you use the manual robot, yang awal punya, training with two robots too, when you use a manual brain, yang kamu sambung here, anda boleh lihat the raw inputs, which means that when I connect it, I can see secara langsung, live, apa data yang dia terima. So this is great untuk debugging. It is great kalau nak test code. But when you upload code into the server, anda tidak boleh nampak raw input secara live atau langsung sudah. So biasanya, you still have to do a bit of testing dengan menggunakan robot control panel dan code editor di sini. And then bila anda rasa uh, anda sedia sudah, okay, robot saya okay sudah, saya mau cuba server saja then baru kamu upload dan cuba server side run if you do straight to server side run susah untuk debug so pastikan that your code is already working when you upload to the server so just in case um, during the competition mungkin robot anda boleh crash if your robot crash you will only lose that round bukan kena disqualified asalkan kamu update the robot for the next set of rounds lah so this means that is bukan terus mati. It just means because kita akan break bah, setengah jam, satu jam, kita masih aturkan. So during the break, you can update your robot. And so it just might mean it's harder to get points because all of it is point-based lah, the mere scoring system. 
So as you can see, itu adalah cara boleh upload to robot. Okay. Kedua, um, the other update yang dimasukkan kemarin is the sample code. So as you can see, dalam demia server side run, ada satu link yang baru for sample code. You will notice that the robot di sini ada slow bot, fast bot, spin bot. So just for fun, let's begin tiga nothing dan satu spin bot. So you can see nothing, 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 spin bot di sini, kita run. And we see what happens. The spin bot akan pergi ke tengah demia arena and then dia akan continuously shoot. But of course, nothing happens lah. In this scenario, is very likely nobody will win. So ini semua tie ni. Uh, oh, okay, no longer tie. Um, some of them will lose because health rendah. So in this scenario, the spin bot does that. But how does the spin bot do it? So sebab ada permintaan untuk sample code, kita balik to the front. You can now see what the spin bot does if you go to the sample code link. And then sini, ah, itu dia, the spin bot. So the spin bot uses memory to count frames. It tries to move to the center of the arena. It spins and fires wildly, meaning they are just tembak tidak menentu arah lah sambil dia berpusing. So mungkin yang special di sini is, and because hari itu ada pertanyaan juga, apalah kegunaan memory? Well, kita menggunakan memory untuk mengira berapa banyak run dia bikin. So we use memory like a time counter. Because semasa simulation tu, semasa battle itu berlangsung, memang masa, uh, in this scenario, bergerak ke depan lah. Dia tick forward. So every tick, dia akan run function. So setiap kali dia tick, counter kita akan tick satu kali juga. So one, two, three, four, dan sebagainya. So here, as long as counter dia kurang daripada 23, the robot sentiasa akan pusing ke arah tengah tu arena. And dia sentiasa akan bergerak ke depan. As long as kiraan dia, dan counter dia, kurang daripada 23. So this one actually saya bikin testing because saya pun tidak tahu apa nombor dia. Is it 23? Is it 24? Is it 30? Is it 60? So saya testing dengan the robot client. Let me show you. I would take this code. I copy and paste it. Kita pergi to the training with two robots. This is just to demonstrate lah, uh, how you can also do your own debugging juga. So sekarang kita ada dua robot seperti biasa. So I will just and paste sini. Let's just say hari I'm still testing. So I actually don't know how many. So saya letak 10. Now, watch what happens when to the robot when I connect it di belakang sini ya. So saya zoom out sikit supaya boleh nampak and I connect. So you see, bila dia 10, it tries to go, tapi dia tidak sampai. So mungkin I nak tukar jadi um, 15. And then saya restart the simulation. So 15, dia bergerak uh, a little bit to the center, but masih tidak dapat. So it's a trial and everything juga. So I found out that lebih kurang 25. For example, when kita restart ni, you see, oh, ah, terlampau, dia ram the other robot. So, it almost works, tapi dia terlampau. And of course, I go back here, I took a 23. Oops. And so restart. So the thing will go to the center, and then you slowly shoot around the center like that. So while this thing is happening, lepas dia counter dia melebihi 23 dia punya frame counter dia di sini dia akan pergi to the second part of the if else statement because dia if kurang daripada 23 tapi kalau dia terlebih daripada 23 then dia akan start this code di sini pula this code just tells it to pusing dan tembak and that's what you do the whole time for the uh, for the simulation Well, let's refresh the loop. So back again to the code. Oh, simulation stop. Okay. Refresh page. So I pergi sini. I copy and paste here. I connect. There. 
So they are piggy tengah and you continue shooting. But as you can see, the slow bot uh, will probably defeat it. So that's Sedikit Sebangyak Pasal, the sample code. But I'll just show you the other sample codes as well. There is also code untuk fast bot dan slow bot. The fast bot and slow bot sentiasa bergerak ke depan. Um, kalau dia nampak dinding, dia akan cuba uh, pusing sup uh, supaya dia ke arah tengah tu arena. And kalau dia nampak apa-apa pun dalam scanner dia, this means kalau dia nampak uh, peluru daripada robot lain, dia nampak dinding, dia akan tembak juga. So, this is the code. Kita guna dia punya proximity sensor and kita check ada item kah dia nampak dalam proximity sensor. So, kalau dia nampak ada dinding where it says if the closest item is a wall, dia akan pusing ke arah tengah arena. This is so that sebab dia sentiasa pergi depan, dia tidak akan terus langgar tu dinding. Instead, dia akan cuba pusing balik ke tengah arena. It will always move forward. So this one mungkin special sikit because kita set desired force kepada max force. Max force ini adalah dia punya paling banyak daya, uh, daya, this one is physics lah, yang boleh di-apply kepada robot body tu. So kalau nak dia lebih uh, lebih slow, kita, uh, we divide mungkin divide lima, divide sepuluh. Uh, kalau if you use max force, kalau dia context action desired force equal context max force tanpa dia punya uh, pem, uh, bahagi dua sini, what will happen is dia akan terus pecut ke depan dengan cepat. So we guna this untuk kurangkan pecutan dia. Then, this is just uh, macam dia punya trainer code lah. If it sees anything, shoot at it. Itu saja. Kalau dia nampak anything in the scanner, tembak saja. The final bot is the most complicated robot and this is actually bot yang biasanya kamu guna dalam testing juga. This is the default robot in the trainer demos. Memang dia pandai tracking other robots. Dia cuba pusing um, untuk mengelak daripada teke, terkena pada dinding and dia hanya akan tembak pada robot-robot yang tidak mati. So, tapi this one, dia ada sedikit randomness. So, ini JavaScript punya. So, maths random ni, setiap kali dia run, dia akan bagi uh, satu nombor integer antara kosong dan satu. Which means it can be 0.2, 0.7, 0.6. So, this means 50-50 lah. Sometimes, dia akan pecut. 50% 50 of the time, kebarangkalian dia lah. Dia akan pecut ke depan. 50% of the time, dia tidak pecut. Then, it will again detect the closest entity via short range scanner. It will also detect robot entities in front of it. Kalau dia nampak dinding, turn away from the wall. Macam tadi. But if it sees something in front, the front is active. And this is mungkin special. Bukan team yang sama. Tapi don't worry lah, kita tiada team. Um, uh, tiada cooperative teams untuk ni. If it sees bukan team yang sama, dia akan cuba ikut it would turn towards the robot. So this one, anda boleh copy and paste dalam robot kamu juga. This basically will turn the robot in the direction of other robots. And of course, dia akan cuba tembak. However, if it sees that the robot is not active, so dia pergi else sini, dia akan cuba avoid. It will turn away from dead robots to avoid also because dia tidak mau telangga robot yang mati. Then lastly, ini semua if else if else ni. So this will only run sama ni. Kalau dia nampak wall, ini highest priority. You turn away. If it sees a robot in front, it will try and shoot or avoid it. If it doesn't see a wall, if it doesn't see another robot. Then it will turn, but random. So again, this is um, very small chance. Actually, is a really 0.5% chance. They are can pushing to another direction. So this robot is very random. Tapi as you can see, memang the default robot um, is also difficult to beat.
So kita balik lagi front. And as you can see, saya boleh testing sini. I just load the default robot. Dua. And I just replace one of these robots with a spin bot, for example. Then I run the simulation. Oh, wait. What, uh, this one not fair because ada, ada tiga default. So let's go back first. So this one is up to you how you want to configure juga. So kita guna satu, uh, let's say, tiga spin bot, satu default. And then we see what happens. So the spin bot semua pergi ke tengah-tengah. The default robot, ah, uh, they are masih out there lah, trying to avoid. But the moment it sees another robot, it might get it. Yeah. Oh, I just realized something. Mungkin ada bug ni, cause dia tidak pandai tembak. <laughs> oh wait, because dia tidak nampak robot. Oh. Dia tidak tembak because dia orang semua team sama. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, so all of them team sama. Okay, so this one kita kena bikin special sikit. Um, because all of them are the same team, this robot will avoid shooting at them. So, okay, kita balik sini. So this one kita kena special sikit. So we have three spin bots and then we need to bikin a manual robot. So manual masih boleh diguna pakai di sini. So when you do a manual robot and you, what this, semua akan freeze because seperti biasa, dia akan tunggu um, debugging, debugger robot di atas sini. So what I'm going to do is, just a moment, saya akan ambil dia punya code sample, tapi saya akan ubah sikit. Dua. Saya ambil sample code dulu. Saya so copy and paste di screen saya. Uh, on my second screen. Okay, kita ambil the mere sample code. So I can copy paste ini. But now we're going to change something. Ini adalah code yang sama. Kita buang front team, context team. That means dia akan tembak apa saja robot. Even though it's the same team. Then kita sambung and we see what happens. So when the thing starts, Spin bot, semua pergi depan. You can see dia lambat sikit because this is a client. So, ah, ini dia. Kita nampak yang debug one ni. So, mungkin ini lambat sikit. But the moment dia nampak robot line, dia akan cuba track to robot. Walaupun dia team sama. This might take a while. <laughs> Sebentar. Sebentar. <laughs> So memang if you're using a client robot, dia lambat sikit. Ah, okay. So you see, the moment dia see spin bot, dia cuba track and then dia cuba hentam the spin bot because that's how this robot works. See, dia pandai tracking. That's why one advantage of using client robots is sebab dia slow sikit, right? You can actually see exactly what your robot is doing. As you can see, they are tembak sudah, but now they are search, seek and destroy another one. They nampak spin bot tiga, so they are langgar and they are cuba kena lagi to the side. They are terlampau dekat dengan dinding, so they are pushing to the center. So you can see this is how you can modify the sample code untuk dapatkan demia robot behavior yang anda mau lah, and then cuba improve on that code juga. And in fact, default can still be made better. Because you notice, default, biasanya dia masih langgar dinding. So you might want to change it so that kalau dia nampak dinding dalam scanner, dari jauh sudah, dia cuba elak daripada langgar dinding. Because proximity sensor tidak begitu efektif sebab terlampau dekat sudah dengan dinding. So hopefully this bagi sedikit gambaran how you can use it. Oh, okay. Uh, ada pertanyaan daripada Faiz Erizat. Okay. For us sekarang, um, or dari pihak Robonio, kita jangka setiap arena akan ada lapan robot. So this to be clear, yang lapan robot ini right, ini bukan, it will be league style. But in this term for the league style, the lapan robot actually is dia kumpul point. So when we say kumpul point, 
dia terbalik sikit lah. The points actually are based on your placing, which is, let's say ada 8 robot, means there are total of 8 places. Tapi boleh tie juga. So this means if you get first place, um, you get one point lah. If you get eight place, it is eight points, which means that yang menang two rounds right is the lowest amount of points collected, bukan highest. So this means if you can place in the middle and so on, you can still improve lah. But if a robot sentiasa finish first, then it will move up on top of its um of the of the league standings. So untuk menjawab soalan. 8 robot untuk setiap arena atau gelanggang. 8 robot. Untuk memastikan gelanggang itu adalah fair. Sekarang kita nampak gelanggang ini bukan segi empat. Um, segi empat tepat. kan? So kita akan tukar this gelanggang jadi segi empat tetap. Supaya dia tidak kemek di sebelah, di sebelah atas dan bawah. So dia akan jadi square. Okay. <laughs> si Roy ni tanya, macam mana mau tambah jarak pengesanan proximity? Hey, tidak boleh. Itu adalah memang satu kekangan uh, yang dalam robot ini. Proximity hanya boleh nampak yang dekat saja. Think of proximity sensor is macam an ultrasonic sensor. Because as you know, ultrasonic sensor dalam robot biasa, biasanya yang ultrasonic sensor murah lah. Uh, becomes less and less accurate over uh, large distances. So the proximity sensor is memang limited. Dia hanya boleh nampak yang dekat saja. Whereas the scanner boleh nampak jauh, tapi dia punya field of vision terhad. So it's up to you how you want to make use of um, dia punya, ini cabaran dia lah untuk the robot battle. Sama ada nak guna proximity, nak guna scanner, nak guna kedua-dua sekali dan sebagainya. Uh, untuk mengesan objek dari jauh dan dari dekat. <laughs> yeah, si Neo pun bagi hint. Yes. Don't forget, your robot tau X dan Y dia. So this one is something that biasanya tak ada dalam robot uh, dunia sebenar. That they know exactly the X and Y. Tapi bagi robot ini, dia tau X and Y. So there are other things lah. Let's say there was one question... Uh, so I'll give you another hint. The proximity sensor list and the scanner list, senarai proximity dan senarai scanner, memang di, is sorted, if I'm not mistaken, from the closest to the furthest. Dari yang terdekat kepada yang paling jauh. So ini adalah satu hint. The proximity and the scanner list is sorted by closest to furthest. So... Even if it's not, you can sort it so that you can find out apa yang terdekat. Oh, masih ada orang masuk. Okay. Hello. Okay. And then moving on. So again, just to repeat untuk for everybody who comes in, bila anda buka arena sekarang, you will notice arena, there are some updates. Demia interface cantik sikit sudah. Demia health bar sudah ada, tiada nombor. Uh, Demia team dan robot name is very clear already right now and at the bottom of the arena khas untuk arena tu ada satu robot ID dan satu robot key so jangan lupa sebelum uh, pertandingan kita akan uh, bagi robot ID dan robot key yang khas kepada team anda kepada setiap peserta anda mesti simpan robot ID dan robot key itu Jangan kongsi dengan tim lain. Because sekiranya robot key dan robot ID terkongsi, terbocor, uh, terbongkar dengan tim lain, then tim lain tu boleh kacau robot kamu. So do not share your robot ID and robot key. The key yang penting lah. Kalau ini kena share, terbongkar robot kamu. Well, yeah, terbongkar robot kamu. However, who knows lah, maybe... You want to do friendly competition. You want to say, hey, cuba challenge bot saya sebelum pertandingan. You can. You can share the robot ID with other teams. Kalau mau, if you share hanya robot ID saja, 
other teams can use and practice with your robot. So kalau mau rahsiakan robot anda, then rahsiakan also robot ID anda sampai hari pertandingan. Jangan share your robot ID or your robot key. Dinyatakan di sinilah. Sharing a robot ID will allow others to load the robot into an arena, but keep the robot key secret as it will allow others to update the robot. So always make sure anda jaga-jaga lah the robot ID and the robot key. So these instructions are uh, terdapat di bawah semua arena sekarang, but you have to refresh the page lah because kita baru saja update server juga. And if you want to practice updating your robot, you can practice it using this robot ID and robot key, the robot manager page. Where masuk ID sini, masuk key sini, nama, team, code. Then update. Tip. Oh, okay, tidak dapat. So you will notice that lepas kamu update di sini in the robot upload page, then if you restart arena kamu di sini dengan menggunakan robot anda, Dia memang akan tukarlah the behavior of the robot based on what you upload. So, for example, tadi I uploaded nothing. So, if I put the robot here and I put the spin bot there and I buka this, then my other bot does nothing. They stay there while the other three spin bots continue. So, if you like to create your own challenges, you can already. Because all you need to do is upload a robot. And then after that, tambah saja bot dalam server side runs. So that robot does nothing lah at this point of time. Okay, let me just double check what's new also. So as always, this is update for today lah. So you can now do robot upload in robot control panel. So memang ada dua button baru. Uh, upload and retrieve. So this one, kamu boleh guna to save your code lah. But just remember, always keep a backup offline lah. Copy and paste somewhere else, save dalam notepad ka. Simpan lah, betul-betul. Just in case, who knows, something happens. So I don't think code itu akan hilang dari server. Tapi sentiasa bikin backup uh, untuk code anda. So as you know, the mere robot ID and key pair is generated for each arena. So, boleh dapat dari footer. You will notice actually other notification baru. So, notify users when simulation is stopped. They can keluar the mere notification on top of the arena. So, bila anda nampak notification tersebut, uh, dia akan bagi tahu anda apa langkah-langkah yang perlu diambil. Sometimes this happens, I tell you, refresh the page. So if it says refresh the page, but refresh the page lah, and it will fix whatever problem yang ada pada muka surat tersebut. And then finally, untuk mereka yang nak bikin offline testing, ini yang special. Uh, hari ini, kita release the source code untuk um, the entire robot server. So source release ada GitLab repo. So sekiranya anda tak sure what is GitLab, GitLab is macam GitHub juga. But this one is purely optional. It is up to you. Kalau nak bikin, boleh bikin. Uh, mungkin dia akan mempermudahkan your testing. But if you want to try pun boleh juga. But you don't have to do this for the competition. It's up to you. GitLab repo ini ada dari sini. Ada juga link on setiap page at the source code. If you click on this link, dia akan buka uh, Kinabalu Coders punya GitLab lah. So let me zoom in. So this is the source code repository for everything. So kena pandai sikit dengan uh, Git lah. If you know how to do a Git clone, good for you. But I'll just go through some of the basics. Even if anda tidak pandai bikin Git clone, tapi nak download, cuba run to server, di sebelah kanan sini, there's something ada icon that looks like anak panah menghadap bawah. If you click on it, you can download the entire source code as a zip file. So Yang Lai Ni is actually into Linux, but if you want, you can download as a zip. So when you download as zip, sebentar, dia sedang download sekarang. Ah, okay, ada. Then when you open it, you will get all your source code dalam sana, which is the same files yang anda nampak di sini. So then the next question is, 
once you get the file, samada melalui git clone atau download the zip, how do you run this on your computer? Scroll ke bawah, ada readme. So the readme pun ada juga dalam file-file yang ada dalam dia punya, uh, dalam dia punya repository. So just for your information, bila saya guna istilah repo, repo tu maksud dia repository. Itu dia. So it just means tempat untuk simpan file. In this case lah, ada repository. I go back terlebih dahulu. Ah, yes. So when you go to the repository, di sebelah bawah, there's some steps. First, to prepare. Ah, this one lah, for your operating systems, kalau kamu guna Linux, ah, great. But if you're on Windows, you will need WSL Ubuntu sini. So memang dia letak sini lah. For those who need help how to install WSL, there's a tutorial saya letak link sini lah. Boleh buka, follow the tutorial. The tutorial takes about 10 minutes. Tapi download file, kalau internet lambat, mungkin satu jam, dua jam. So ready some time to do it lah. Atau bikin sebelah malam, then start download, then pergi tidur lah. Because dia kena download, dia punya Ubuntu operating system and install on your Windows. So it will tell you how lah. Ini step-by-step step guide. Then lepas kamu install, you will need uh, dia punya bahasa Node.js and versi dia mesti 18.x and above. So biasanya ini maksud dari 18.0 atau ke atas. So and higher. Then buka Linux terminal. For those yang tahu Node.js sudah atau pernah cuba ni, actually this one is pretty standard lah. Um, first thing kita update system. Then kita install Node.js. Then lastly, ada soalan? <laughs> Then lastly kita install and the latest version of Node.js to stable. This will give you Node.js because bergantung kepada um, operating system kamu, sometimes dia bagi kamu Node.js 12, Node.js 16, Node.js 17 dan sebagainya. So the last step sini akan upgrade Node.js kamu to Node.js 18.x. After you've done this, ini set up, then you can install. Tadi dapat zip file kan? Kamu unzip the file, masuk ke dalam your terminal. Then in the base directory where the code resides, so this is sudah unzip lah, sudah masuk dia punya folder yang kita nampak tadi. Run this npm install. This akan install semua library yang diperlukan. Then kita guna the default configuration untuk server. CP ni maksud dia copy. So it just copy dia punya sample. Uh, kepada file yang baru. So, this thing contains default settings, boleh guna pakai. <laughs> Excuse me. Lepas tu, untuk run, ada dua cara. NPM start or node server JS. After you've done that, you should be able to open a browser and access a copy of code.robonio.net sudah. Ini is more than enough to already debug robots via the browser-based code editor. So the advantage here is, if kamu guna local server, the mere browser-based debugging is faster than menggunakan server. And in this scenario, you can run the whole server secara offline. Tak payah internet anymore. So if you can bring it around, uh, masuk desktop di sekolah or on a laptop, you can do testing whether or not you have internet. The rest of this is for other people lah. If anda seorang programmer, berminat nak buat penambahbaikan and so on, you can also do the developer and debug run. There are some ideas di sini that you want to use. The rest of this is very technical lah. Ini set up untuk server kita sekarang. So this one, tak payah ikut. Excuse me. Sorry. So that means ikut, prepare. Prepare is... Pastikan operating system semua setup sudah. Pastikan Node.js semua install dan kena update. Install it. Then run. So for those who know how to use Node, sudah ada Node setup, this is all a five-minute process. But if you are starting from installing WSL, it may take you um, one or two hours. 
depending on your internet speed and your ability untuk bikin dia punya uh, terminal base lah. So kalau nak practice boleh juga. And in case there are any issues, let me know also sama ada PM siring di WhatsApp lah, tanya sini pun boleh dan sebagainya. Atau nak cuba sekarang pun boleh juga. So semua ni dilaksanakan on um, will be done inside a terminal. So apa yang dimaksudkan terminal? I'll just demonstrate di sini. Just a moment. Saya run terminal dulu. So when you install WSL, oftentimes you get a screen macam gini. Dia punya screen kecil sikit. So what I'm going to do is saya akan besarkan dia punya text sekarang. Uh, okay. So this is a WSL punya terminal. So at this stage, this screen is the screen that you will get lepas kamu install WSL Ubuntu. Lepas ni lengkap, you will eventually end up at this screen. Well, mana tu screen? <laughs> Hilang sudah. You will get this screen. From here, um, for me, I usually put my files inside one place lah. So, tunggu lah. I won't use a zip file. For me, senang saja. Saya guna git clone. So, git clone is... One moment. Kita pergi to the source code sini. So, how do you git clone? Ah, git clone dia lain lagi cerita. So, to clone dia punya project. Kita pergi project sini. Ini dia punya SSH. So, GitLab ni. I can use HTTPS sini. I copy. Then, sebalik lagi, eh, wait, mana Ubuntu saya? Okay, supaya ni clear sikit. Okay. I git clone. I paste the link tadi that I copied and pasted. So, it's called Matterbots. Oh, wait, let me check whether this directory already exists. Do we have, okay, I have Matter.js server site. So, I can git clone. So I'll just demonstrate how this installation is done. Then from there, I go into Matter.js bots. From Matter.js bots, just to recap, kita balik lagi sini. I'll just run this, even though this one memang semua is already installed on our system. Ada sudo app upgrade, uh, update. I'll just show you so that if you see this, um, you won't panic because this is how the thing usually works. So that one is done. Oh, I didn't upgrade. Never mind. sudo app install node.js. Tapi this one ada sudah. So sudo app install npm. sudo app install n minus g. Command line option G is not understood. Oh, I think I got this wrong. sudo app npm install n minus g. Kalau ini salah, saya akan update nanti. Yes. Sorry, tersalah. So it's not sudo app, it's sudo npm. Then finally, sudo n stable. So as you can see, they are installed version 18 of Node.js. Okay. Moving on. Then we npm install and then copy the mere environment. So ini semua sesudah masuk. I'm inside dev matterjs.bots. I'll just run npm install. Kalau ini first time kamu bikin, it might take a lot it might take a while to download everything. After that is done, then you can copy dot env sample ke env. So, ingat ini adalah Linux environment. Linux environment mesti ikut kalau huruf besar atau huruf kecil. Kalau Windows, uh, Windows longer sikit. But Linux environment, dia mesti guna the same capitalization. So, huruf kecil, huruf kecil. 
copy that. Actually, sama seperti JavaScript. You, I think you notice if JavaScript anda you use capital letter in your terminal lah, then memang bermasalah tu nanti the 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 variable. After all that is done, all you have to do is run either npm start, and the thing will run. And oops, address already in use chair. Ah uh, yeah, because I'm already running a server on my computer. Okay, never mind. Tunggu. Up. Let me get that working. So I can buang my other server because I have another server running right now. <laughs> okay. So when you run it, npm start. There, it's already working. So now, what when you to test this, just go to a browser. Localhost five thousand one. And you have RBN code running on your local host. And this one will look a bit different because there are certain things that are not running, but you can immediately use this untuk bikin demo on the spot. Okay. Oh, the demo already started running. Okay, never mind. We start a new demo. There. So this one will run faster lah. Dan senang lagi kalau nak testing on the browser. And kalau nak practice, boleh practice di sini juga. So that is how you can use the source code. And then bila nak exit, sama ada tutup dunia window atau tekan control C and dia akan keluarlah daripada the app. And anytime you want to run it again, just npm start or node server. And dia akan restart kembali. So itu adalah cara uh, basically, how to set up your own server. So just go to the link, then equip the instructions, uh, get the files, then equip the instructions in the readme. If there are any problems, let me know juga lah. Okay, just in case kamu nak run ni di sekolah anda atau what, feel free to do so. This is open source. Um, so, and if you like to make changes to it or you want to try to practice your game writing code and so on, please feel free to do so dengan code inilah. Uh, memang this code is uh, bukan kesemuanya hak cipta terpelihara sana kena valu coders and so on, but just give us due credit lah. Tidak payah what anything. So this is sumber terbuka. Right, let's kembali to um, the Robonio site, code.robonio. So that was the GitLab repo already released. And then this is also together with yesterday. You can now start simulations with um, preloaded server-side robots. But now you can load your own robots in Suda. You've seen the robot sample code. You've seen the robot manager and how to use it to upload robots into the server. The API dashboard, uh, ini actually is untuk the penganjo, uh, kita lah, kinabalu coders, to manage the back end. You can still access it, it's not an issue. Semua ni link ni. This one, without an API key, you cannot control anything. But we can see sekarang, for example, ada 17 arena running on the server sudah. There are 17 arenas running on the server right now. So we can see it lah. The rest of this are not so important, the updates. So yang penting is yang hijau-hijau ni yang ada link dan yang new-new ini that's telling you what are the feature baru. So more or less, um, inilah uh, pembentangan cie, uh, untuk saya hari ini. Uh, tapi kita masih di sini sampai pukul 10. So mungkin ada soalan and so on lah. Uh, any questions or anything? Mungkin mengenai the competition and so on. Kita masih setting up all the rules. But you will probably see a change later tonight. Uh, mungkin the server will be restarted again. Gelanggang tu it akan jadi segi empat tepat. Because kita akan update server nanti. I think selepas sesi ini, saya akan update server lah. Mungkin lebih kurang pukul 10 lebih. Macam gitu. So, any questions so far?
as usual, I think recordings will be available of this. So just in case diperlukan, bah, um, nanti boleh dapat dari YouTube juga lah bagi kawan-kawan kamu yang tidak boleh attend. So in case ada extra soalan, as always boleh PM siring uh, atau PM terus dalam WhatsApp lah if you don't mind berkongsi dengan rakan-rakan lain. Um, selain daripada itu, just in case lah, kalau sebal, sebelah pagi uh, pagi tengah hari dan petang awal petang, biasanya saya dikerja lah. So I might take a while to reply. So yang paling bagus is mention saya, which means that um, sekiranya is really intended for RBN code and soalan itu adalah soalan technical, uh, what you can do is, as usual lah, di, kalau sana di WhatsApp, kasih at and then um, uh, nama saya or reply to one of my messages supaya saya terima notification. Because biasanya WhatsApp group saya semua kena mute. Nanti kacau uh, tengah, teng tengah mesyuarat. So I have to check it again lepas habis mesyuarat. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, sambil kita menunggu untuk soalan atau kawan-kawan lain untuk datang. Saya akan also update some of the thing, then I can um, nanti saya upload. For example, tadi, demia instructions not entirely correct dalam readme. Sebentar. So kita check dulu. Demia GitLab is sudo npm install. Demia index is Right. So, any, uh, okay, in case there are any questions, just let me know. Kalau nak testing the server, testing lah sekarang. And who knows, mungkin ada soalan yang akan timbul. Try the sample code, copy and paste. Try the robot upload. In case anything goes wrong as well, saya pun ada direct access to the server sekarang and saya boleh lihat kalau anything to fix lah. Ah, saya nampak ada orang lain sudah cuba upload uh, robot dalam to system. There is one person yang sudah bikin. I will not say who it is because if I tell you the robot name, you will know Demia Arena ID. But I can see at least one person sudah upload robot dalam server. Selain daripada saya. Oh, just to demonstrate something as well, I might as well, just to show you also apa demia risk. <laughs> what happens kalau kamu guna while true? So, macam gini lah. Let's say I force new, a new um, robot new punya code. And then saya masuk sini. So, I'm going to try and do this very quickly because this will crash my browser. They are crash browsers je. While true. And then saya bikin macam gini. And then sa buka macam gini. The moment sa kasi tutup ni brace, my browser will hang. Hopefully, yeah. Actually, risau. Mungkin ini hang sa mga Google Meet juga. So if you do while true, browser terus akan hang dalam infinite loop. So mungkin soalan yang akan timbul di sini. Apa akan berlaku sekiranya kamu upload robot yang while true masuk ke dalam server? So don't worry, server tidak akan crash. On the server, they are, memang they are strict sikit. Oh, tambah keluasan standard, scanner. Okay, I terus jawab soalan. The server, if it detects while true, dia akan hang untuk satu saat saja. Then dia akan matikan proses yang while true. How do you uh, perbesarkan demia scanner? Well, ada demia trainer di sini, which is variable scan. So, ini saja. You can see that when you run this code yang desired scan. Demia scanner is sama ada panjang atau lebar. 
there are only two kinds of scans. Okay, this one susah sikit nak nampak. So what I'm going to do is kita balik lagi front because kita tidak mau robot kacau. So what I'll do is I delete this whole thing here. So tambah one manual, one do nothing bot, and then the rest of this are delete. So now we have one manual, one nothing bot. Now I buka this arena sekali lagi. And as you can see, because the letak manual, dia tunggu sambungan daripada our connection side. So now I will just go to the top, buka the mere robot control panel, uh, tukar dia jadi variable scan, connect. Tutup ni. So now you can see the variable scanner is here. So let me drag this. So memang the limit of your scanner is lebih kurang about 2.5 petak di depan tu robot. And the shorter scanner is on the side here about half a petak. Tapi kelebaran dia lebih, dia memang lebih lebar. So you cannot push the scanner further than 2.5 petak. That is the limit of the scanner right now, which means you must see other strategy line to find other robots because setiap robot, it cannot see very far on the on the arena. They must seek and destroy other robots. So there was a question, actually. Hari tu, bolehkah kita bikin robot yang stay saja di line-line in different parts uh, and avoids getting shot, which means uh, dia cuba sembungi on the arena. Dia tidak tembak apa-apa, tapi dia cuba tahan sampai penghujung demia battle. Yes, it's possible. This is not against the rules. Memang if robot tu boleh tahan sampai penghujung round, it has a chance at winning. But what happens is, is if dia terkena, uh, who knows lah, dia kena tembak oleh robot line, health dia akan kurang. And at the same time, accuracy dia, because dia tidak tembak, memang kosong. So let's say two robots survive to the end of the round. One robot is robot penyembungi, which means dia cuba sembungi saja. And the other robot, dia memang robot yang seek and destroy. Kemungkinan besar yang robot yang kedua, yang seek and destroy tu, berjaya tembak robot lain, which means its accuracy is higher than the robot penyembungi. And then, mungkin si robot penyembungi juga, dia kena damage juga. So, at the end of the round, walaupun kedua-dua robot tahan sampai penghujung round tersebut, kita akan bandingkan siapa yang ada paling banyak health dan siapa yang paling banyak accuracy. If the health sama. Tapi ini jarang berlaku in an active match. Lagi jarang dia berlaku kalau ada 8 robot dalam satu gelanggang. So hopefully also this scanner range uh, boleh menjawab soalan si Roymi juga lah. So the uh, the thing is here is sama ada panjang atau lebar. Atau, and between the two ada trade-off of the range. Macam saya pernah nampak, and this one I was just looking around, saya nampak ada orang yang dynamically changing the range depending on where the robot is. So you might have ideas lah from this. How the scanner range, you can change depending on where the robot is on the arena. Not really a hint, but something I was also considering. Who knows? Um, when the thing knows that it's got hit by something, or can I shot, or there's a projectile nearby, it will change its scanner range. Not bad. 17 arenas now running.
Oh, and this one is just um, for the mere load balancing purposes. Actually, when this load balances kamu nampak, mungkin yang index tu akan hilang tu because sini boleh nampak sudah. Load balances maksud ada empat CPU. So empat CPU tu, so every time you open an arena, right, satu daripada empat CPU ini akan dipilih um, secara rawak bergantung kepada arena ID kamu untuk run demia arena, demia simulasi. This way, demia task atau job akan dipisahkan kepada empat CPU yang berlainan supaya satu CPU tidak kena overload. So actually, inilah maksud untuk load balancers. They are split. This way, we can run four times the load. And rasanya pada hari pertandingan, mungkin server ini akan digunakan for continuous testing lah. Tapi kita akan start up a special server only for competition. And that server also we will make available to everybody lah. That one day kita copy the mere files saja over into that server. So just in case you're wondering, the load balances means four CPU cores lah. This one is running uh, four different simulations. Uh, not four different simulations. Simulations across empat different CPU core. So a recap, untuk the robot ID and robot key, pihak Kinabalu coders akan janakan setiap robot ID dan robot key dan kita akan bagi robot ID dan robot key itu kepada setiap tim yang masuk ke dalam RBN code. So RB, so robot ID dan robot key itu rahsiakan unless, and even if anda nak share robot anda dengan tim lain, just share robot ID sahaja. Robot key itu jangan share. Oh. One last thing also. In this form, you may realize, uh, bila kamu type your robot name, for you can use certain symbols, tapi there are some symbols. For example, them ya, um, I can't show it to you, but it's actually on keyboard saya di sini. Uh, shift 6, tiada. Them ya, power symbol. But other symbols can. You also notice you cannot put square brackets. So the system will block certain symbols. So any bukan bug is we are preventing the entry of certain characters. But by right, you should have no problem because you can still do stuff like this. Or for that matter, uh, using apostrophes and so on. But other keys, it won't let you type. Tapi alphabet, nombor, and most of the special symbols boleh guna pakai. And brackets too, but not square brackets or braces. Tidak dapat. Sama juga untuk demia team punya what? It will prevent you from entering these uh, these keys. Lastly, when you put your brain code this in it. It will still try and help you. It will still show you any errors in your code, but it won't stop you from uploading it. So let's say you have broken code like this. Walaupun syntax error, kamu boleh update. But if you update broken code into the server and it's semasa pertandingan, the robot will simply not run for that round. It would show an error. And maybe this one is also important to notify. I've noticed certain kinds of errors can you will get executor timeout bukan bermaksud actually kamia robot ambil masa terlampau panjang uh, untuk siap demia kerja executor timeout mungkin akan berlaku kalau ada error juga ada syntax error dalam kamia robot 
but the exception takes too long to send to you. So jangan anggap that every exception timeout is actually the mere robot uh, habis masa untuk proses. So this one is another interesting, um, not a bug, but how JavaScript works as well. Excuse me. One moment, minum ayah dulu. Okay, I might as well demonstrate this, but I have to demonstrate it on my local server. Um, I've created a robot called Crashbot. Uh, Crashbot, memang when you try and run it, they are through crash. <laughs> it actually contains while true. Let me show you how its code looks like. One moment. Sebentar, sebentar. Mana notepad saya? Okay, that was my robot what just now. Crash bot. Okay. So just in case, this is actually how the robot looks like on the server. So the brain is while true. This is actually, because if you can, what fast enough, right? You can actually upload a very broken brain into the server. So dalam my own server right now, there's something called Crashbot. Inside the brain is just while true. So what happens is, bila kamu cuba run bot ni, the first time they are run, they are terus hang. So this is uh, how the server stops it. So we try and run crash bot with three nothings. And then kita cuba run. The moment it run, they are terus script execution timed out after 500 milliseconds. So basically, any robot that hangs right, you immediately get an error macam gini. And just for your information, Memang that is the time limit. If the script takes longer than 500 milisaat atau 0.5 saat, dia akan, um, dia akan matikan proses tersebut. And of course, then nothing happens lah. It will still run, but the but the round itself will be what? So this one is memang the mere execution timeout lah. Any further questions? If not, then mungkin kita akan um, meng, uh, mengakhirkan. Nah, uh, we might conclude sesi ini uh, mungkin pukul 9.30, which is dalam masa 7 minit lagi. So in case there's anything nak test atau tanya, um, uh, boleh tanya selepas ni juga on WhatsApp. But if you like to do any testing on the server right now, might as well do so. And then, uh, any questions, just ask here lah. Kalau tidak, kita akan end lebih kurang pukul 9.30 lah. Kalau tiada soalan lain juga.
All right, tiga minit lagi. I think what will happen is, uh, walaupun kita akan bersurai hari ini, uh, pukul 9.30, just in case, uh, kemungkinan besar that hari Rabu, hari Kamis macam gitu, um, a few days before the competition lah, kita akan mengadakan uh, sesi santai, sesi perbincangan lagi, and also a proper briefing about the finalized rules. Kita akan sediakan dokumentasi untuk uh, demi final uh, finalized rules juga. So, just ambil maklum that selepas lebih kurang pukul 10 malam uh, pukul 10 malam hari ini, uh, server akan di-upgrade sekali lagi and mana-mana update yang diperlukan, especially gelanggang segi empat, akan dimasukkan dalam sistem. So, you notice that the gelanggang will change. Masih ada orang join. <laughs> Hai, kepada um, uh, kepada mereka-mereka yang baru saja join. Uh, actually, kita come towards the end sudah of the of uh, demia demia sesi kita hari ini. Tapi kita akan sediakan video juga lah. Tapi sekiranya ada apa-apa saja soalan, boleh tanya juga sekarang atau kalau nak testing or ada uh, any additional questions lah. Sama ada boleh berkongsi di WhatsApp, tanya di sini pun juga. I think for the time being, uh, saya akan tetap berada juga di sini tapi saya akan hentikan dari... Eh, ada orang? Iya. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ah. Yang saya cakap tu yang tiba-tiba saya bertapuk tu, itu boleh itu. <laughs> eh, yang mana sudah? Ada kan ya, ada batu coding yang saya antar tempat kau kan? Ah. Lepas tu yang ada beberapa kali sudah saya cuba, saya pakai Nina laptop, saya pakai juga handphone. Tapi saya rasa itu coding error itu. <laughs> tapi <laughs> tapi dia buat dia kena langgar terus dia bertapuk dia diam diam seratus dia pikir yang bertapuk yang bertapuk <laughs> so, <laughs> oh um that's the thing you have to check komia code bug dia masih boleh berpusing and so on kan so mungkin what you can do is bagi dia orang yang tidak mau bertapuk tapuk sebelah dinding macam gini kau tengok sample code sini okay so ah ini dia Cuba um, try this code. Cuba guna code ini. This code dia akan detect kalau ada dinding dekat dengan tu robot. Robot itu akan pusing menghadap tengah uh, di, di tengah arena. So of course kalau kamu mau dia bergerak keluar lah daripada daripada sana, you still have to give it desired force. Tapi you can try copying and pasting this code dalam brain kamu. The, um, and then dengan menggunakan code ini, at least the robot dia akan pusing menghadap lagi ke uh, ke tengah demia arena sana. So this code is under fastbot slowbot and then demia if closest is proximity. So if the closest entity is a wall, face the robot towards the center of arena if too close to wall. So to turn the robot to face the center, actually line ini saja diperlukan. Context action desired angle is the angle to center. Jadi kenapa kena, kena pakai juga itu na uh, command yang itu itu yang close yang tu ni yang kena tulis-tulis yang closet to entity itu dia just yang 
perasa untuk kita memberitahu tuh benda sih bah yang kod sebenar tuh tuh nah bahkan konteks action kah kena kopi juga sampai habis tuh uh, if you want to cuba you should use all this code but if you want to know what setiap demia code sini bikin line by line okay so first thing this is pemboleh Obama so dia ambil dari state proximity dia cuba cari what is the closest object to the robot ini actually bermakna closest object to the robot ikut proximity sensor closest okay uh, the closest tu maksud dia yang daripada scanner saja ataupun dari buntut dia pun boleh kesan juga proximity tu is 360 darjah so memang it is the closest thing ya yeah. okay so dia akan check apa tu entity type So how do you know what these items are? Actually, this is something that anda boleh lihat sebentar. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Kita ambil demia contoh konteks. Okay, saya buka lagi sini. So actually, you can ambil contoh ni daripada robot yang sebenar or from here. You can actually see because saya sudah update ni juga. So, uh -huh. eh dah, saya copy paste dulu supaya semua boleh nampak. Ah. See, this is the mere proximity. So you have to know how to baca JavaScript. So ini memang uh, JavaScript punya programming lah. The reason why kita sentiasa minta, ini adalah isi kandungan dalam pemboleh ubah konteks. Nama dia konteks lah. This could be called ABC. Tapi untuk this example, kita for konteks. So dari konteks, they are dot state. So dia akan baca to what's underneath the mere state lah. Then, dia cari proximity, which means, kita cari, si ada kekunci dia, name, team, if you scroll down, we will finally find kekunci dia, proximity. Then, di bawah proximity, ada senarai. Senarai itu terdiri daripada objek-objek yang dia lihat. So, ini adalah pembuka demia objek, ini penutup demia objek. Ini adalah senarai demia objek, which means, dalam contoh ini, dia nampak dua benda. Satu dia nampak is a wall. Boleh nampak dari entity type dia. Satu lagi entity type dia nampak, dia, punya, dia boleh kesan lah because this is a proximity sensor, is a robot. So, kita baca please start lagi. Context state proximity kosong. This means, uh, objek pertama dalam state, di bawah state, proximity and then object kosong tu index kosong bermakna first object because this one ini bukan macam manusia manusia biasanya dia start kira 1 2 3 untuk komputer dia start kira dari kosong so is kosong 1 2 3 so if kamu cari item pertama actually index dia kosong so it will cari this then dia cuba baca entity type Is it a wall? This is why kita assign benda ni pergi pemboleh ubah closest. Then kita check closest dot entity equal equal wall. Kalau I nak tulis ini dalam uh, style yang lebih ringkas, I can write the same code macam gini. Sebentar. So this one would be programming punya what lah. So I could also do the same thing. Closest. Eh, sorry. Context dot state dot proximity first item dot uh, dot entity type. This is the same as wait. Ambil code ni terlebih dahulu so that I can show you how this thing boleh diringkaskan. We just go to this line here on top. And then sini is what I'm typing di bawah. Mm -hmm. So you see, context type proximity zero adalah sama dengan sini. Dia assign kepada closest, but closest.entity type actually is, ini adalah sama dengan closest.entity type dari atas. 
It's just that this one's a pecahkan supaya lagi senang dibaca and kita boleh catch kalau the proximity sensor tidak nampak apa-apa pun. So this one is memang dia punya JavaScript code lah. Dia check if there's a wall paling dekat dengan to what. So kita kena guna dia punya kekunci entity type supaya kita boleh tahu apa jenis benda dia nampak. Dia boleh nampak tiga jenis benda. Sama ada peluru atau projectile dia punya dinding atau wall or robot line. Robot lah, dia punya entity type. So this is what you can use to check. However, if kamu mau pusing tu robot just menghadap ke tengah tu gelanggang, this is the only line you need. In fact, kalau nak cuba, copy and paste this. Balik front, kita pergi testing. So not this testing. This one is running already. We go to training with two robots. Oh, this one is already di tengah. So, susah nak nampak. So, what we do is, kita guna this, but we add four nothings. Bila kita run ni, tunggu up, batuk dulu. So, you see, oh, ada orang masuk lagi. So you see ada empat robot, but all the robots does nothing. Tapi kita control debug one. So if we go here and kita copy and paste the line tadi and connect. Oh, this one tak boleh nampak. You can, actually this debug one, dia pusing menghadap. Oh, belum lagi sambung. Tunggu. Lambat pula. Ah. So, they start. So, you can see robot ini, they are pushing in the direction of the center of the arena. Just from that one line of code. Let's say, saya buang ni code. Tiada sudah. And then I restart the simulation. I just refresh the page. Oops, simulation stop. Refresh page to start. So, you see, that's a notification. So, the simulation is here. Kalau saya connect dia tanpa apa-apa pun, kita tunggu dua, tiga saat. Oh, mungkin semua line yang lambat ni. So, you see, bila dia start, it doesn't turn at all. Dia memang straight saja. But, if you would what here and change this to that, This thing would turn slightly in the direction of, yeah, they're lambat sikit sekarang. It would turn slightly in the direction of the center of the arena. Just a moment. Refresh. Dia pusing menghadap tengah arena. So just to go back to the code here, the mere sample code. Cubalah copy and paste some of this code out dalam robot anda. If you are not that sure pasal the mere code lah. Um, as I said, this one, dia akan face the robot towards the center of the arena. But if you want to try kalau dia dekat dengan dinding, Copy and paste this code. If you want to try and make it move forward at different speeds, cuba copy and paste this code. Tapi tambah atau tolak nombor ni lah. Dia punya pembahagi. So in this case, lebih besar nombor ini, lebih lambat robot anda. Then if you want to check kalau dia boleh tembak at anything that goes in front of the scanner or proximity sensor, you can try and copy and paste this. So semua ni adalah komen yang ada forward slash, double forward slash ni, these are comments. Hopefully, these comments boleh tolong anda faham also what each of these functions do. Like this one, randomly move forward. If you copy and paste this into your robot, your robot akan slowly move forward. You can try this, actually. So we just buka that. We go back to the front here. 
This time we just use two nothings. Kita start. Then we put this here and we connect. We wait for a few seconds and you can see this right. Tick tick. See, they are piggy ke depan, but sometimes it stops, sometimes they're cepat, sometimes they're lambat, and so on. So you need your guna random movements. There are other things that you can do. For example, let's say I can do context action dot desired angle and plus uh, equal maths dot random times something. Uh, hey, tunggu. Maths dot random. Then times say saya tahu berapa radian sudah. So I think radian tunggu ah. 360 degrees dalam radian is berapa tu? In radian tunggu ah. So check dulu. According to Google, 360 degrees is 6.28319 radian. So what does this code do? Well, robot tu akan pusing secara rawak lah. So I can take this code. Now sekarang mungkin you can see the robot, they are... Ah, okay. Sorry, screen saya terlambat. See, the robot itself, ah, they are memang kiri ke kanan, kiri ke kanan tidak menentu arah because they are bikin random rotation. Is damaging itself lah kalau dia bikin macam gini. Tik tak, tik tak, tik tak. So that is random lo uh, rotation for the robot. In case this code is of interest, saya copy and paste dalam demia chat juga. Mana? Harap-harap menjawab soalan uh, atau at least bagi uh, sedikit sebanyak uh, jalan untuk pergi ke depan. <laughs> Membantu ni atau? Membantu. Yeah. Randomly so, move. So what you should do is, kamu cubalah copy, paste, trial and error and then boleh belajar sedikit pasal JavaScript lah. A lot of this is actually just how to begin programming saja. Demi if, then, else and so on. Yang... Bikin semak sikit, <laughs> yang bikin semak sikit is just faham bagaimana nak tarik demia nilai pemboleh ubah daripada JSON uh, daripada JSON ini. Set up the ESP32, ESP32 tu, ada nampak tak? <laughs> ya, saya dengar oh, ROS lagi. <laughs> ROS pun programming lah. <laughs> Itu pun programming tu. Ya, yeah. so... The reason actually kenapa kita pergi to programming is because number one, um, sebab last time pandemic lah, so semua boleh bawa online. But kedua, actually these days, hardware tu murah sudah. Yang mahal, right, is programming dan programmers. That's why kita nak cuba kalau boleh, kita budayakan sedikit sebanyak pasal programming dan algoritma lah. Semua ni is pasal algorithm saja dan strategi. <laughs> Ata, hmm. kalau saya mau, kalau saya mau, saya, sebab sekarang saya ingat kalau dah cakap tadi yang tentang pembelian kan sekarang lagi ni had, hardware ni kadang-kadang susah juga saya mencari ni kadang, kadang mau kasih cukup cukup di benda di sekolah ni. Ah ya, jadi, hardware mahal. One thing jadi, hardware mahal, supply chain issue juga. Ya, jadi kalau isi kalau yang begini sudah ni. Saya nampak benda ni macam bagus juga. Cuma kalau yang saya mau set up yang satu benda yang macam yang kamu buat ni, maksud saya yang dia punya local host ni lah. Hmm. Boleh guna komputer biasa bah? You tidak payah. The only reason kenapa I can I have to run a server di sini is because kita ada peserta dari literally seluruh Malaysia. So that's why kita kena buka satu server. And then actually bilangan peserta kita pun banyak. Kita ada lebih daripada 30 team. So that's why I kena buka server yang um, terror sikit lah supaya boleh angkat. But kalau dalam sekolah, um, let's say if you just have small group like 10, 16, 20, komputer biasa boleh angkat bah. Semua ni because local host dan pada rangkaian tempatan. Yang actually cabaran di sini untuk kita di Robonio is that 
server kita seharusnya menampung connection daripada as I said lah, 20 team ke, berapa banyak arena semua running at the same time. So, komputer oh. biasa boleh. Jadi kalau yang yang kau kau kasi running ni, contoh ada berapa 20 lebih tim. Jadi hmm. dalam satu server yang sama cuma dia punya kasi split split tu tem, tempat sajalah. Tapi dalam split, split dalam, dia dalam dalam, dalam tempat tu juga ikut oh ikut core. Ikut CPU core. So it's one server tapi the server ada empat core. So let's say kamu ada laptop, biasanya these days the laptops is like 8 core, 16 core, right? Actually memang boleh angkat lebih. Cuma, that's the challenge lah. This one server kita, kita tidak boleh letak di rangkaian tempatan, kita kena letak dalam data center yang ada internet. So that's why for us, um, harga untuk server yang 4 core, technically is berbeza daripada let's say computer di rangkaian tempatan yang ada 8 core because they are actually different class ba one is server one is demia laptop atau desktop biasa mm -hmm. okay 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 yeah. saya dapat media sudah mau buat di sekolah nih yes. tapi itu tidak payah internet saya, saya tidak payah internet pun kalau yang di sekolah kan lo, local host saja Dapatkan dia source code, you should be able to run it on local host. Tapi if ada masalah di local, but you still need internet sekejap. Kalau nak, you know, dapatkan file, kasih install semua, set up. Tapi lepas tu, you can put it offline and dia orang boleh run lah local. Guna IP saja. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Ya. Yeah. Nanti saya pergi jumpa aku lagi. Saya mau, saya mau bela, macam saya belajar betul ni. <laughs> Siap pula ni. So if you like to set it up, boleh bah. Uh, reach out saja, pergi sana Casey. <laughs> Kita bayar surat rasmi and so on. Memang saya mau pergi sana. Saya mau pergi kasih set up. Satu, satu laptop pun boleh sudah tu kan? Uh, laptop boleh. Actually uh. this one, my test server pun on laptop bah. I've run eight, nine different one. Tapi my test server ada lapan call lah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, 950 juga. Okay lah, never mind. I stop recording pukul 10. Nanti server update lagi, uh, pukul 10 lebih dah, about 10.30, pukul 11 macam itu, saya akan update server sekali lagi. Okay, thank you, Arthur. Yeah, no problem. Take okay. care. Okay, semua. Yeah. Stopping the recording, Arthur? Uh, I can try. Let me try. So, okay. tidak pernah stop the remote recording. Okay, everybody, uh, what? So, saya stop recording. Alright, thank you, semua.